face the flag of our nation. Put your hand over your heart and repeat after me. I pledge of allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, Legislator Gale. Okay, uh, at this point in time, uh, I think we can call the roll, and, and then we'll proceed to uh, the honorees uh, who are on today's agenda. Thank you, ma'am. Okay, roll call. Deputy Presiding Officer Richard Nicolello. Alternate Deputy Presiding Officer Howard Coppell. Legislator Sela Bino. Here. Thank you. Legislator Carrie Salage. Legislator Denise Ford. Here. Thank you. Legislator Laura Curran. Here. Thank you. Legislator C. William Gaylor III. Here. Legislator Vincent Muscarella. Legislator Ellen Birnbaum. Here. Thank you. Legislator Delia DeRiggi Witten. Legislator James Kennedy. Legislator Laura Schaefer. Here. Legislator Arnold Drucker. Here. Thank you. Legislator Rosemary Walker. Here. Legislator Donald McKenzie. Here. Legislator Stephen Rhodes. Here. Minority Leader Kavan Abrahams. Here. Presiding Officer Norma Gonzalez. Present. We have a quorum, ma'am. Thank you very much, Mr. Pulisa. Okay. Uh, each month, we have the privilege of honoring members of the Nassau County Police Department. This month is a little different because we are uh, honoring a top cop, but we're also honoring two detectives. Now, I don't know. I think uh, I'm going to call on uh, Mr. McDermott I, uh, to introduce the top cop, and then I'm going to in ask John Brighouse to introduce the detective. So, uh, Mr. McDermott. Tell us about the honoree. Good afternoon, everyone, and happy holidays. And once again, thank you for uh, honoring the top cops from Nassau County. On February 17th of 2017, around 6 p.m., also Richard Papa of the 2nd Precinct was on patrol in, in Syosset and it was a call to, uh, to respond to a domestic violence uh, dispute. The perpetrator had, uh, uh, had left the scene who just committed an assault and violated an order of protection, and uh, Officer Papa was doing the, the investigation. He was, in, investigate, I'm sorry, he was interviewing the, uh, the victim of the crime when the perpetrator responded back. It became violent real quick. That's what happens in these... Uh, Domestic incidents, it's uh, very emotionally charged, and the, uh, the struggle led to the ground. And during the struggle, one of the officers that were at the scene, uh, gun was grabbed by the, the uh, perpetrator. Officer Papa tried to, to, uh, to restrain this uh, perpetrator and, and ultimately took his taser out and tased him. This uh, inca incapacitated the uh, perpetrator, and they were able to br bring him into custody without injury to uh, anyone. What makes this so, uh, so such a, a good uh, situation and a good arrest, and that's why we're here today honoring Officer Pop, is that uh, this could have uh, went bad real quick. We could have had uh, police officers, civilians uh, shot and killed with the, uh, the officer's gun, and uh, that's why we're honoring him, him here today, and he's... Police Officer Pop is the Nassau County Top uh, Cop of November 2017. Thank you. Great work. Okay. Okay. Uh, Acting Commissioner Ryder. I'm going to be very brief. Uh, Officer Papa comes from a family of cops. His grandfather, two uncles, and his cousin Vinny is in the back. Um, you can tell by the haircut, he's just fresh out of the academy. You can tell by mine, I'm not. So 
He's, he's done a great job since he's been out there, and all of that goes back to the seven months of training that goes on in that academy, and that's the, the, the money and everything that gets put forth by this board and makes it our job easier to get trained and give the best cops out there. So, again, thank you all for that support. And, again, it's all about Officer Papa today, so thank you. Oh, pleasure. Uh, Officer Papa, would you like to say something? We're going to let him speak, but we'll be brief. No, go ahead. I'd like to thank the county ledge, the police commissioner, and the PBA president. I really appreciate everybody taking the time out to recognize me. And uh, it's an honor to work for the county. And I appreciate working for a department that has the cops back. And uh, thank you very much. I appreciate it. Thank you. You're welcome, Officer Parker. All right. I'm going to ask you if you would just please uh, stand there for a while while we can get uh, the two detectives to the to the podium, uh, and then we'll take a picture. And we have, okay. Okay. Good afternoon. I'm John Wickhouse, president of the Detectives Association. I would just like to thank Presiding Officer Gonzalez, Minority Leader Abrahams, and the full legislators for taking the time out today to honor two of our detectives. Uh, today we have Detective Lyndon John and Jason Gartner from the uh, Police Department's Elite Robbery Squad. Beginning on July 14, 2017, Detectives John and Gartner began their investigation into a series of armed takeover bank robberies in the southwestern quadrant of Nassau County. Over the next five weeks, these subjects strategically planned their armed robberies and escapes terrorizing these communities. The subjects would enter the banks armed with loaded handguns, vault over the counters, forcibly taking large amounts of U.S. currency. Detective John and Detective Gartner's relentless investigative skills during this investigation ultimately led to the arrest of three individuals responsible for the violent robberies of three banks. Recovered during the investigation, was a loaded 9mm handgun, which was used during the commission of these robberies, in addition to a substantial amount of additional evidence. I would like to congratulate Detectives John and Gartner for their unwavering diligence and steadfast efforts in seeing to it that this difficult case was solved and the violent individuals responsible were arrested. Again, I would also like to thank the legislature for your continued support. Thank you. Also, I'd like to thank everybody uh, on the board here for their support. These two cops, uh, detectives, were both cops of mine when I was a young sergeant. They, were, they hold that same energy today and love for this job as when they were cops and now turn into detectives. They do a great job. It starts with cops like Officer Papa doing that arrest and those detectives that are behind the scene that do that investigation. So they do it with the technology and support that this board constantly gives us. So, again, we want to thank the board and congratulate both of our detectives today. Now, uh, Detective John, Detective Gardner, are you, uh, would you like to say something? Come oh, on. I would like to thank the legislature for this honor and thank the police department for the, all the support they gave us in assisting in this investigation. Oh, you're welcome. Okay. Thank you. Okay, and? Well, you have to say something. First of all, happy holidays. Thank you again for all your continued support. Nassau County Police Department stands behind its detectives, officers, and superior officers, and we appreciate your help. Thank you. Well, you're most welcome. It's our pleasure. All right. Now, I don't know how we're going to do this, but uh, I, think, I think at this point in time, <laughs> if we're going to... How are we going to do this? Tim, Tim, do we know if we do it down here or down here? Up here? Oh, good. I know it's always up here, but you know what? They're here. Uh, the legislature has a citation for each of today's honorees. The first is to Rev. Papa, where are you? I just saw you. Yes. Okay, let's go. 
Uh, Officer Papa, where are you? Okay. James. Uh, and Detective John. Okay, Detective John. And Detective Button. Okay. Now, all right. Yeah, yeah I'm, I, I don't sit. I sit. Thank you for your service. Thank you. Thank you again. Great job. Okay. Good job. Thanks again, Commissioner. All right. Okay, uh... Uh, we have a point of personal privilege by uh, two of the legislators, uh, Legislator Kennedy and Legislator Walker. And uh, to introduce the point of uh, personal privilege is Legislator Kennedy. Thank you, Presiding Officer. Um, <coughs> excuse me. Excuse my cough. I'm a little under the weather. Um, my name is uh, Legislator James Kennedy, and today with Legislator Rose Walker, we are honoring um, a gentleman, Thomas Mastacoris, who happens to, he is a um, chairman of the Board of the Fire Commissioners in South Farmingdale Fire District. Um, t today we are honoring him because he is this year's recipient of the New York State and Nassau Regional EMS Council's Award for the Advanced Life Support provider of the year. Uh, Tom has been a uh, paramedic with the Nassau County Police Department for 19 years and as I said he is the uh, chairman of the Board of Fire Commissioners of the South Farmingdale Fire Department. Um, since the time that I've been a legislator from that first moment I got to know um, Tom. He introduced himself to me and he's been um, such an, a, a great person, a great gentleman. Um, the things that he does in his fire department uh, it invites us all out there. Um, such great things. The 9-11 uh, uh, memorial that he has at the fire department is an incredible, incredible display for anyone to see and uh, um, an honor to the, uh, all those lost on 9-11. And um, as a, um, as a EMS, <coughs> excuse me, as a um, Nassau County medic, um, 
Tom does uh, great, great things. He's uh, a gentleman second to none, and I just want to say that I'm honored to be able to bring uh, this um, this citation today to Tom because more than more than anything, the uh, you know the, the medics and the the fire department uh, means so much, and I can't even imagine what we where we would be without that without those m women and men who do so much for us all across the county. So I just want to um, say thank you to Tom, and um, I do want to. Uh, give uh, Legislator Rose Walker an opportunity to say a few words. Thank you, Legislator Kennedy, and uh, you really said it all, but I could tell you that Tom is an amazing man, and uh, not only what he's done in his department, and certainly for all of us here in Nassau County as a, an EMS uh, medic, uh, but uh, just on a personal basis, he's there for, for you, for any kind of questions, any kind of support that you that you need, certainly within his district and across the county. So, uh, And it's certainly an amazing honor for all of us that he has received this high-level award, and uh, it's a pleasure for us to be able to recognize him. And I'd ask him if he would please step up to the, to the podium, if he doesn't mind. Tom, if you would like, if Jerry would like to say something first, and then Tom, if you would like to say something. This is really about Tom Mestercores and what a great um, police medic and, and volunteer fireman, and he's, he's been involved with the whole uh, community for his entire career. It's just an honor. First of all, thank you to the legislators and to the great people in the audience to uh, take time out to recognize someone. Uh, such as uh, Tom Mastercars. There's a lot of Tom Mastercars in our police medic division. Uh, they are, without a doubt, um, you, we all see them in our rearview mirrors. They're going 24-7, and uh, they save lives every day. They are such an essential part of life here in Nassau County and have saved thousands and thousands of lives. And this fellow, Tom Mastercars, he epitomizes uh, the role model that uh, we want all our police medics to be. So without any further ado, uh, Tom Mester Chorus, he deserves his time. Just want to thank, thank you to everybody. Best of luck for 2018, and I look forward to working with all of you. Tom, you have family here with you today? Oh, well, uh, why don't you join them for the for the uh, photo? Come on. Okay, here comes the commissioner. All right. I okay. I just like to add that. Um, as, as uh, Jerry said, they, they save so many lives, but I could tell you, too, they stick by you to the end, and uh, oftentimes when the outcome isn't good, they, they stay there with families, and they comfort the families, and they, you know, give us the support that is needed, and I could tell you that that's happened to me on a personal basis, so I just can't thank them enough for all they do, and Tom, you epitomize what the department is like, so thank you. Okay, now, I know, uh, well, it certainly was a uh, uh, welcomed beginning to today's uh, legislative meeting, and as is customary, uh, we do have 30 minutes of 
uh, public comment, and uh, we ask that each of the individuals uh, speak uh, to the three-minute limit. And uh, I will probably make it – it's possible that I can make it through everyone who has submitted a slip. So I'm going to, without further ado – I oh, I'm, oh, God, I'm, I have news for you. I may not. Um, ask the first speaker, who is Joanne Borden, who will be celebrating her birthday on December 9th. Six. Do you think I forgot? Six. Is it six or, or nine? Which one is it, Joanne? Six? Joanne, is it six or nine? Six? Okay. Okay, six. Joanne. And you only have today and next month. That's all you have to make it right. Anyhow, they started the thing, so I better start talking. Okay. Good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon, Joanne. Re Republican and conservative leadership are missing a very serious situation regarding their transgender constituents. The very lives of transgender men and women are at stake. Like most transgender people, I lived with the woman inside me for as long as I can remember. Somehow, I was able to control my womanhood better than others, but not all the time and forever. Most transgender people have a strong need to express the woman or man inside them, and just as strong a commitment to, permit, to protect their loved ones from the present consequences of transgenderism. This conflict leads to a state of depression, which too often results in suicide. Youngsters are driven to suicide by classmate bullying. Forty percent of transgender people, compared to 1.6 percent of the general public, attempt to a suicide, and too many succeed. This does not happen in a vacuum. An important cause is that we are delegitimizing and dehumanizing by being excluded from the human rights law. Legal equality has been proven to be the first step to correcting this. Even though I was able to keep the woman inside me a secret for about 80 years, I wanted to get rid of her all that time, but I could not get rid of her. She was always there insisting to be expressed. Your inclusion of us in the human rights law will allow us to be human in the eyes of others. Equality in law is the first step toward correcting our unjust position. The beatings and the murders we endure the overwhelming majority of your constituents agree with giving us equality under the law. The majority of the, count of the country already extends equality with no ill effects. It is important that you listen to the scientists and medical scientists that say we are born transgender. Your refusal to include us in the human rights law perpetuates our illegitimacy and is an underlying cause of the loss of life to suicide and murder. It's an important life-saving step that you pass the proposed transgender human rights law. Thank you for listening. And Norma, you have very few chances to make your – to write yourself. Okay, Joanne. I may uh, give the legislators a uh, Christmas present by not appearing here and screaming at them next month. <laughs> you, you always act like a lady. Pardon okay? me? You always act like a lady, so you never scream at us. <laughs> All right? You're well prepared, and you make a lot of sense. Thank you very much. Thank you. And the very best to you, and happy birthday. Pete Gaffney. Good afternoon. 
and uh, hope everybody had a wonderful Thanksgiving. My name is Pete Gaffney. I uh, reside in uh, Westbury, Carl Play School District. And uh, what I just want to say is congratulations to all the recent uh, legislative uh, election winners and to the new county executive on her historic uh, victory. Uh, one thing, though, if the new county executive truly wants inclusion in all county residents, suggests that she include a 36-member in a transition team, one of the town of North Hempstead's council members. Uh, my other topic that I want to talk about is I've been here many, attended uh, many of the Nassau County legislative meetings. In the open comments, I continue to ask for additional community policing. At the end of my three minutes, the entire legislator says thank you. And to date, we really haven't done anything yet. Drivers today, they're out of control, all shapes and all sizes, young, old, men and women. It just seems like they all have a speed race of me first mentality. Drivers are ignoring the rules of the road. Excessive speeding, 10, 20 miles or more over the speed limit. They're not stopping at stop signs. Making illegal U-turns on major roadways. Cut through corner stores to beat a red light ahead. Not to mention talking and texting on cell phones while driving, etc. Ironically, people do not realize that the timing of the traffic lights are adjusted to the posted speed limits. So the person who drives at a uh, excessive speed limit is going to reach the same point as uh, the person uh, uh, who's just normally following the rules of the road. And pedestrians, they're just as bad. You know, I understand that the county finances are not in the best shape, but they got to find a way how to pay for more additional uh, community policing. And by having community policemen and policewomen writing summonses, and speed camera fines, it should change the majority of the public's behavior and increase the county's coffers. Once the public understands that if the law is broken, there will be consequences. Besides, when, pe when police are visible in a community, statistics and history prove that crime is prevented and it goes way down within that community. Also, residents, they'll feel, feel secure knowing that cops are nearby. I'm just really tired every day about reading or seeing horrific pictures in the newspapers of car crashes where somebody's loved one dies, and that's including pedestrians. Thank you. Thank you, Peter. Jack McCloy. Dear members of the legislature, thank you very much for allowing me to address you today and throughout this past year. I wanted to congratulate those of you who are victorious in uh, uh, retaining your seats and those who uh, are not. I want to wish you well on your new phase of life, especially Ms. Gonzalez. And uh, I uh, wanted to just mention quickly that uh, this coming year, I believe, will be a year that maybe we could see a little bit of uh, additional uh, unity, especially with some of the issues that I've mentioned with like assessment reform, uh, wrong way driving prevention, and uh, red light camera timing that can be changed to benefit uh, both the uh, drivers and make our roads safer. And I uh, wanted to just uh, quickly say that I'm not going to mention anything in specific about any of those, but uh, you've heard me mention thoughts in the past. Just wanted to wish you all well, and especially my fellow Baldonite, Laura Curran. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Mr. McCloy. Uh, Johnny Mora? Good afternoon. Good afternoon. My name is Johnny Mora. I am a program coordinator for the National Black Leadership Commission on AIDS. And Blackout's mission is to educate, empower, and mobilize communities of color in the fight of HIV AIDS and other health disparities among the most underprivileged communities. I am here to invite you in, uh, to um, in, in recognition of World AIDS Day, December 1st. Um, several organizations have given you some of the flyers, um, and anyone who would like to have a flyer, please see me. Um, December 1st, we are having a street bliss, among with other organizations, uh, at 250 Fulton Avenue, Hempstead, New York. Um, free HIV testing, education, prevention, and so forth. I'd like to also 
let you know that HIV is still on in our communities. There's an opioid epidemic. What do they do with the opioid epidemic, uh, with, you know, through injection? Sharing needles and so on is a, is a way of transmission for HIV, hepatitis C, and so forth. So please help us to educate the community to prevent more illness. Uh, yes, the new generation, they're saying that it's from the 90s, an illness from the 90s. I'm, I'm still educating the youth, and when we do a pro and post test on uh, how, the way of transmissions, some youth still think that it's through saliva or through some other sources. But uh, last time I was in a college, and a college student told me that um, it's a gay disease and it's uh, acquired through mosquito bites. Please allow us to go into school and educate the youth to prevent this illness. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Moore. Domenica Califano. Hello, everyone. Everyone knows me. Um, happy Thanksgiving. Unfortunately, I'm here. Besides talking about Operation and VIP Splash, the money that they stole from taxpayers that have been fighting out. Ever since I've been speaking out, I've been nothing but harassed by Anthony D. Exposito by the 4th Precinct. They have came to my home by one of their individuals, have arrested my niece, saying that she falsified documents, a 14-year-old girl, bruised her arms, eight detect six detectives removed her from school. All charges against my niece were dropped. Unfortunately, they came to my house knowing that I resigned there. They said that they saw a suspect. At gunpoint, the sergeant pulled out a gun on my family, on my younger brother that's 43 years old, on my 14-year-old niece and an 8-year-old nephew, that he ended up fainting, got so scared that it's petrified. The 4th Precinct is totally corrupted. My family is in fear. I took down four heroin dealers that I worked with narcotics. Unfortunately, the narcotic agent left 52 bags of heroin by the front door of this individual with the drug dealer's phone. I will never, ever help trying to clean up our streets of Nassau County. My family is in fear. One of the drug dealers, guy's name is Dana Mahan, has been going around my house, has threatened me, bricks through my office windows. Um, signs all throughout Oceanside Island Park, Rockwell Center, the 4th Precinct detectives are well aware of it. There was an order of protection against him. Nassau County DA Singers has dropped the order of protection. This is a disgrace as a taxpayer, as a citizen here in Nassau County, has to be treated by the 4th Precinct. I've been speaking out at the town of Hempstead meetings. I've been speaking out here. I cannot believe the corruption in Nassau County, how dirty they are. The Commissioner Ryder is well aware of it. I sat down with them for three and a half hours. I do not know where else to go. As I said, I was arrested um, for a misdemeanor, I believe it was, falsifying a police document. I was all over the news. My address was put out there. As they were aware that I worked with narcotics, I have their text messages, videotapes of them. This past Saturday, I had three detectives, not just one, three detectives coming to my house expecting me to give them my cell phone and telling me that I was going to be under arrest, which I have this on videotape again. There was no reason to. I'm not sure where else to go to or where else to speak out about. But I have an entire family petrified. I have a 14-year-old niece. Unfortunately, her father is an addict, and he was busted through the drug ring. But I am thankful that my brother is still alive today, and I got heroin dealers off the street, not realizing I risked my life to get the drug dealers away from my brother and other young kids in our neighborhood. I thought I did a good thing, and I think I did the biggest mistake of my life, that I'm being terrorized by the 4th Precinct cops. The cops have told me that they hate my brothers and they should die. I don't think this is appropriate. I have videotapes, surveillance tapes on them. I have statements in the last two months. I have over eight complaints or more at the 4th Precinct that they remove. There is signs throughout Oceanside, and the detectives do nothing about it. There is surveillance cameras in shopping centers that they're able to take. And they're not doing it. I don't think this is fair. I brought it to everyone's attention to let them know I'm not sure what's going to ever happen to my family from this. 
but I did try to help to clean up our streets from heroin dealers, and it was a horrible, horrible thing I did. I spoke out about corruption, about Operation VIP Splash, and I got nothing but grief from it, from everybody. $14.5 million contract that's under federal investigation. I have them trashing my name all over Facebook. I don't think it's appropriate. I came to the county to see if there is anyone that can sit down and try to speak and, and try to help us. Okay. Uh, Ms. Califano, would you please wrap up? You got it. That's how it always is here. It's, it's okay. always wrap up. Corruption just continues in Nassau County. There are, there are people who are listening, uh, Ms. Califano. Pearl Jacobs. So uh, good afternoon, all. I hope everyone had a wonderful Thanksgiving. I congratulate all the legislators who were reelected to represent and serve their constituents. A special congratulations to you, County Executive Elect Curran. Congratulations. Your victory exemplifies the power of the people. You promise to bring real change and transformation to a county government that has been plagued by political patronage, nepotism, and cronyism. A county government where politicians place their own ambitions ahead of their constituents. A county government that only represents the affluent and politically connected. A county government that only that systematically and strategically excludes minority communities from Governor Cuomo's vision of a vibrant and sustainable Long Island. A county government that encroaches upon another community's boundaries and creates a fictitious designation and all in the name of greed, or as we call it now, new age colonialism. I could go on and on, but we've all saw the movie. I wish you great success in this most challenging endeavor. I am confident that you will work hard and remain humble to restore confidence back to the hardworking tax-paying tax residents of Nassau County. Again, congratulations. And thank you so much, uh, Legislator Curran, uh, for coming to our meetings three times in the last six months. You were there uh, in the community. You got to meet and greet the residents of Uniondale, and you were, your message was embraced. Thank you. Legislator Abrahams. Um, congratulations to your reelection. And would you provide an update on the Union Dale Streetscaping Project, B1116? I will say this, Pearl. Um, as you well know, the, the calendaring of that calendar, contract, which we have pushed for on our side and I pushed for because it, it would enhance the Union Dale Avenue area. Um, is in the whole hands in the hands of the presiding officer, which I'm sure, as you know. Yes, but uh, I have to ask. I understand. Yeah. Okay. As stated, uh, Legislator Abrahams, in a congratulatory letter that we sent to you from um, Heidi on behalf of the Notion Garden Civic Association, we look forward to working with you to improve the quality of life in Uniondale, to getting the Uniondale Avenue streetscaping project started, and to give the residential areas of Uniondale equal, if not greater, attention to that given to the Nassau hub. After all, Uniondale Avenue is the gateway to the hub. Any other look than one of uniformity between the south and north sides of Hempstead Turnpike would cast a disparaging eye on Nassau County government. Thank you. Karen Reed. Good afternoon, Presiding Officer Gonsalves the Nassau County Legislature. My name is Karen Reed, and I'm a resident of the Baldwin community and a member of the Baldwin School Board. Two years ago, our county legislator, Laura Carr, presented Baldwin District with an opportunity to apply for a CPG so we could replace our non-repairable electronic sign that sits on the corner of Ethel T. Kloberg and Grand Avenue. It's right outside the high school. It's seen by a lot of people who pass up and down Grand daily. As in many communities, our electronic sign is one of the integral, integral ways in which we communicate with our entire community, the events that are taking place in our school, 
as well as other community events, such as meeting times of other community groups. The Baldwin School District's business office completed the, um, the, the grant project, I believe in August and September, or September. We are also working in conjunction with um, uh, Senator Kaminsky also to obtain funds through the state legislature. We cannot complete our um, application until it's voted upon here. I have been in contact with Legislator Kern's office, um, Legislator Abraham's office, following up on this project. We have many community members asking about what's going on with the sign. And those who have reached out to me, I've explained to them that the process, we have gone through the process. Um, I've been told that at this point, it has to go through committee, and then it can be brought before um, the presiding officer for vote. So I'm here to respectfully ask that it could be put through committee in December with the hopes of getting a vote in general legislation in December 11th. We really could use the help. Thank you. Welcome, hi. Uh, Ms. Barrett Meredith, I did see you. Okay. Several items uh, that you want to address. Would you want to address them all now or wait till they come on the calendar? I'll just do an overview now for my three minutes. Okay, you Thank got you it. very much, you Presiding Officer Gonzalez. Um, happy post-Thanksgiving, pre-holiday. I'm not as uh, generous as Joanne. God willing, I will be back in December, even though it is also the month of my birth, because I celebrate the whole month. So I figure one of those dates, I might as well torture all of you. <laughs> Um, as I started my journey here before this body with veterans, I will continue with that. But first of all, I have to do my own sidebar. And since I'm in my own three minutes, I choose to do that. To uh, congratulate all those that are coming in and thank all those who have served. Um, again, unlike Joanne, I probably have yelled at folks across this podium only when I was yelled at. So I only give what I get. But I definitely want to congratulate my legislator and incoming county executive elect Laura Curran and thank her for the work that she did in representing her community and as was evidenced by her residents being here to support her throughout that process. But once again I'm here because of the dearth of program support and assistance for our beleaguered veterans in Nassau County and Long Island. Um, Again, I always read the paper in general. I guess that's my journalism background. But I'm always amazed at looking at the veteran section when I see pretty much the same types of meetings, the majority of which are in Suffolk County. Um, and I just noticed that, you know, the photo op earlier with folks doing the toys and collections and everybody's all giving and happy during this holiday season. But um, I don't see many of you when it comes down to those day-to-day -day activities that are impacting our veterans, the homelessness, the hunger, the disillusionment, the depression, the fact that we still have veterans that are dying in their homes as we speak, or dying on the streets, or dying in the prison that we pay these well-funded consultants. So my hope as we go into 2018 with some new faces, and unfortunately, or maybe fortunately, if folks change, some old ones, that we do take on a new, less partisanship mentality and focus on some of these issues and really bring some real solutions. Not a lot of rhetoric, not a lot of talking, you know, maybe less parades, but I will say I did have the opportunity to participate in the Veterans Day Parade in New York City um, and to see the fresh faces of our military and to give them assurances that at least what, for my part, that I would try to do the best that I can to make sure that when they do come home, that they have a real homecoming after the parade and a pancake breakfast is over. And the last thing I want to say, because I want to try to be timely, which will be a rare feat for me, once again, if we can do something about the alleged visitors parking that more county employees seem to park in, it would be appreciated. Thank you. Wow. Okay, you got it. Uh, Heidi, Heidi Seft. Good afternoon. Um, my name is Heidi Saft. Most of you up there 
know me, but for those who don't in the audience, I'm uh, the first vice president of the Nostrand Garden Civic Association in Uniondale and a member of the Greater Uniondale Area Action Coalition. Uh, I'm here. Well, first of all, congratulations to all those who are going to be representing us, either newly or again. And as uh, Pearl, our president, said, it was great to see Laura Curran at our meetings and also Legislator Abrahams. We have about 40 to 80 people who attend our monthly meetings. And uh, personally, the reason I'm involved is because I care about the quality of life in Uniondale, and it needs a lot of help. So, presiding officer, I understand that you're going to be moving on to greener pastures or other things or whatever you should choose to do in your life ahead. What I'm asking you is this. There's one more full meeting of the legislature. The date is December 18th. I have been coming here asking you to please put the Uniondale streetscaping project on the agenda. That's B11-16. You have one more opportunity to do that. Outside of this building, there is a bench that the current supervisor of Nassau County had erected to show respect and honor for our civic group's previous president, Melvin Harris, Jr., and his wife, Patty, is here. Stand up, Patty, please. For him to be honored in, in such a way that there is a stalled here is an indication that we all need to reflect and ponder about situations such as racism, exclusion, respect, treating each other the right way. I'm asking you, Presiding Officer Gonzalez, to please put the streetscaping project on the agenda. What that will indicate to me is that you've had a seat on that bench for a short time and reflected on what really the right thing to do is. Our community has not really been given much attention. Pearl talks about the reasons why. She's a lot better at it than I am. But now is your golden opportunity. And then you can move on to your greener pastures. Thank you. Tom, I believe it's Tom. I. I think it's you, right? Uh, Joanne, next to you. Did you put in a sli yeah, slip? A Come on. Yeah. I, okay. I, okay. You um, didn't use a dark enough pencil. Oh, oh I see it. Okay. You see, okay, excellent. So, so say it for the record, please. Okay. I'm Dan um, Dobruff. I'm here. I'm representing um, Joanne Borden and um, NY Tech. I, I wanted to congratulate um, County Executive Elect Laura Curran on her uh, win and I wanted to thank um, my legislator, Ani Drucker, for coming to the, uh, the T-Door um, last week. He gave a fantastic speech. If you haven't checked it out yet, you, you, you should, all of you. And I'm, hope, I'm hoping that before you leave in December that you will put um, the agenda identity to the Human Rights Charter. It's, you still have an opportunity to do that. and. It will be great for your legacy, besides that's the right thing to do, so I hope it's something you'll consider, and I hope, um, County Executive Elect Curran, that once you're County Executive, you'll continue your strong advocacy for the transgender community, and hopefully you and Minority Leader Abrams and whoever the presiding officer will be, will be able to sit down at some time and be able to agree that adding gender identity to the County Charter of Human Rights would be would be something that you'll do, and I, I hope that will happen. Thank you, everybody. Welcome, Dan. Okay, uh, that ends public comment. Uh, there are no other slips before us, and so we can now move on to the uh, calendar for today. And lo and behold, there is only one item that's not on the consent calendar. And since it's number one, I'm going to call that item first, and then call the rest of the items that are now. 
Um, the reason for the consent calendar is the fact that uh, the items that went through our committees were uh, voted upon unanimously. And so that's why uh, the consent calendar exists. But there's just one item, and that's item number one, Ordinance 135, uh, an ordinance authorizing the issuance pursuant to Section 90.10 um, uh, of the local finance law refunding bonds of the County of Nassau, New York, to be designated as substantially public improvements refunding bonds and providing for other matter in relation thereto and the payment of the bonds to be refunded the uh, thereby. Moved by Legislator Nicolello, seconded by Legislator uh, Capel. And who's here to speak on this item? Good afternoon. Eric Norton, Deputy County Executive for Finance. The proposed refunding will provide the county with approximately $21 million of savings. It will provide savings of roughly $5.5 million a year for the first four years, which will be, um, which NIFA has included as an item that they are accepting as part of the NIFA reform budget. And as people are aware, Congress is probably going to, um, in the process of allowing counties to do ref um, advanced refunding bonds, so we have to get this done this year if we ever hope to get these savings. And I'll take any questions you may have. Any questions from the legislators? Um, minority Leader. Eric, this, this was an idea that, that was contemplated and start, it started its contemplation when? Um, we've been working with our various underwriters probably since um, late August. We didn't have enough details to include it in our proposed budget, so we had just showed that there was possible savings in the multi-year plan. But we felt, obviously, any opportunity you have to get savings, even though we didn't have it in our proposed budget, no, it's something that the county should pursue. No, I, we agree. I just was wondering why it wasn't a part of the, the county's 2018 proposal in September. Right. But thank you. Any other comments or questions from the legislators? Any public comment? Yes. Oh, oh, excuse me. Uh, ex uh, hold on, Meredith. Uh, just real quick. Legislator DeRidge Witt. Thank you, Madam Presiding Officer. What was – I see here that it's being um, – the value savings of 5.4 percent, approximately. So, what is, what is the difference between the bond rate, the original bond rate, and what we're getting now? Good afternoon, Steve Conkling, uh, debt manager. Um, in terms of rates, there's two ways you can look at it. One is the coupon, which we pay to the bondholders, but sometimes that's higher than what the actual yield is. Um, if you just give me a, a second on this, I will get the numbers. Um, and, and the numbers are changing, you know, as we constantly update them. But um, for the new bonds, the, um, I'd say the all-in cost, there's several different ways we look at it, is about 2.5% um, for the new bonds that we would be refunding, we, we, for the refunding bonds, which are the new ones. So, so the prior bonds were approximately, like, over 6 or 7%? Is that what you're no, saying? No, no. The coupons would have been, but the uh, – Average would have been about three and a half percent. I can get you the exact number on that, but it's uh, significantly lower. But for the new bonds, it's about two and a half percent yield. So a one percent difference in interest is yielding this much savings, you believe? Yes. Right. That's all right. Okay. And just one last yes. question. Okay. And, and um, hey, Eric, is um, when you're saying bonds, so we're purchasing a number of new bonds. Not it's not as if the whole lump sum is going in one process. We're issuing new bonds. Yes, refunding bonds. And the money will go into an escrow account to pay off the old bonds. Okay. All right. Thank you. Any other questions or comments from the legislators? Any public comment? I believe Ms. Meredith. And I, too, am a believer. Yes, Mita Meredith Baldwin. My question uh, has to do, and I'm glad that Legislator Dirigi Witten at least brought up one part of it, but what exactly did we initially 
borrow these bonds to do, one, and two, if we borrowed this money, because a bond is borrowed money, why did we not complete the project? For example, the streetscaping in Uniondale that I've heard about for a number of years at this point and other projects, as was brought up by my own residents from Baldwin. I mean, I don't understand even that they can't get an approval for a grant that they've done all the paperwork for. Uniondale, the south of the Coliseum, cannot get their roads done, but we have an opportunity to save money on refunding borrowed money just so we can borrow more money for what projects that we are not seeing, particularly on the south shore of Nassau County. So could someone please, you know, clear that up for me? Unless I'm just the only one that's confused because I guess since all of you have the information back there, you might have more information, but could you kind of enlighten the rest of us who only have this brief synopsis about refunding bonds of the county to be designated substantially public improvement refunding bonds? If we haven't made the public improvements, why are we refunding them? Hello, and I Eric, really appreciate Eric, some answers. Uh, Eric Norton is coming up to address okay. your questions. I appreciate that. Okay. We pay too many taxes for crickets. All right, so just to clarify, the fact that we are refunding the bonds, does that mean that the projects go away? The money still sits in those capital projects. What we're trying to do is save on the annual debt service for each of those projects. And these projects go as far back as 2007 and some as current as 2015. But the projects themselves do not go away. It's just that we're saving on the interest costs that we've borrowed before. Sort of like refinancing your home. You still have the money, but you have an opportunity now to pay less. That's the wise thing to do. So we're holding on to the money, and the residents are driving in unsafe streets with potholes and things of that nature. Um, but we're holding on to that money, and we're saving on the debt for the money that we already borrowed. You know, and to use the analogy of a home, we still have to pay that mortgage because after about a couple of months or so, you will get put out. So I'm just still trying to understand what were these projects, maybe that's the specific question, what were these projects earmarked? Which projects were these that were holding on the money? Can someone answer that question? And that's all uh, I wanted to say, unless somebody again up there wants to ask the questions. Uh, Mr. Norton, can you answer that question? Do you have a list of those items that uh, are put forth? I go back to 2000 and, and, seven. and seven. Right. There's a long list of projects, and I believe it's available for the public if they want that list of projects that we're refunding. I do. I do. I do. Okay. Madam I uh, Hold on one minute. Those of you who are interested in uh, receiving a copy of those projects, uh, please uh, do yourself a very simple a favor by contacting your legislator, and that legis your legislator should make that, that uh, uh, list available to you. Okay. Any other public comment? There being none. Question. Uh, legislator Solange. Just so, uh, Mr. Norton, uh, Ms. Cressel, uh, wait, why has the county been paying for, overpaying for them for so long? Just trying to understand this. Since 2007, you're saying? You were not overpaying for them. You got the best interest rate available at the time that you issued those bonds. And generally speaking, bonds are callable at the 10-year period, but there's also what we call an advanced refunding scenario, whereby when the interest rate environment is correct, such that you can issue new debt and still earn enough interest in the escrow to pay off the old bonds, you look at the timing of that plus the cost to actually issue new bonds to see when it makes sense. It's a process that we go through constantly to review our outstanding debt to see when it's economically feasible to do this. You know, we. We've come to this board probably every year with different refunding scenarios. We just did one last January. It's not coming. And this is the group that works at this current time period. 
act. And we're choosing to act now because you're expecting Congress to act on this soon? No. We had, as I stated to Legislative Abrahams, we have been looking at this particular series since August, and after we vet which projects actually make sense, uh, working with our bond council, we come up with the list, and these are the ones that work. But the problem is that it now has become critical to do it now because of, the, of Congress pending actions. And, um, but this has been economically feasible for a long time. No. No, as I stated, we get proposals from underwriters throughout the year looking at our portfolio of bonds, and sometimes the savings may be 1%, 2%, which don't, doesn't meet any reasonable thresholds from the state level or from our own internal levels. So now these, this group of bonds, is, it works to get us this great amount of savings. Understood. All right, thank you. Hey, are uh, there being no other questions? Uh, yes, uh, Pearl. Yes, yeah, so the gentleman just stated, uh, Legislator Abraham said he, he was working with you on this. Um, would uh, contract B-1116 be involved in this, uh, the contract for Uniondale? Is it, is it on the list? Pearl, I, th I think I've, maybe I've done not a great job explaining this to you, but I'll try again. Um, B-1116 doesn't require any bonding, never did. I think I've explained that now multiple times. B-1116 is a contract. It was bonded with in 2011. The proceeds of what we're talking about today have nothing to do with B-11-16 at all. Okay. B-11-16 is a contract that only the presiding officer can call. I have urged her, I have encouraged her to call it. If she does not call it, it has nothing to do with what we're talking about in refinancing today. Actually, Deputy County Executive Norton it's my understanding we, we do these types of refinances quite frequently. Um, so this is not an uncommon practice. But in regards to B11-16, that is a contract. It has nothing to do with bonding. The bonding for that contract has already taken place five years ago. It has nothing to do with the bonding or the refinancing what we're talking about today. So I just want to make sure I'm clear that we're talking about two totally different things. And I think, Heidi, you might have, might have mentioned that contract comes up for consideration. It wouldn't be on the 18th. It would be on the 4th. It's a contract, so it comes up in our rules committee only. And so I would encourage you, I mean, it's our hope, obviously, the, the design officer would call it for the 4th. But if she does not call it for the 4th, it cannot appear on the 18th unless there's a special meeting of the rules committee meeting. So it's, it's actually the next opportunity would be next Monday, just to be clear, just a point of clarification for the record. And, and my next question, um, this refinance of the bonding, would it have any impact uh, on our property taxes? And the refinance of the bond would have the any bonding, impact? Uh, the bonding, yes. Would it have any sort of impact, if any, on our property I would have taxes? Mr. Norton, I don't believe so, but Mr. Norton, I mean, I would have someone. From, I think that what he's talking about, Pearl, come back for a second. I think what he's talking about with no, please, please, Eric. I think what he's referring to, obviously, Congress is considering many different things, which will impact your ability to be able to uh, write off your uh, uh, prop, your local and your state taxes as it pertains to uh, being able to get a federal refund. There, there are also measures that Congress is taking up in terms of refunding as well, and I'll let Eric explain those and elaborate a little bit more, but it's not pertaining to your taxes. But go ahead, Eric. Right. Yes, in terms of, the, in terms of your taxes, the, to the extent that we're saving money, in, in this case $5.5 million for each of the four years, that means that instead of making other cuts or having to raise taxes, we have found a way to actually save the taxpayers' money. So, but Eric, explain what's happening in Congress, why you need to do this today. Okay. Um, Congress, the House of Reps actually put in a provision that actually stops the practice of advanced refundings. So that's why this is critical. Okay. And our bond counselors have stated that even though it may not be passed right now, the fact that it's out there, they cannot give us a clean opinion come January if that's still pending. And that ability to remove the, the potential to do advanced refundings, does that have anything to do with the 
what's going on in regards to the House and the Senate as they contemplate revamping local and state uh, ability to write off local and state taxes in your in it's your a separate issue. Sep that's what I thought. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Hey, how's there be no other uh, Meredith. Knowledge is power. Um, okay, so now my question gets my question quickly is since the request has been put out there on numerous occasions, particularly with regard to the streetscaping, and I'm sure there are a whole lot of other issues. I mean, let's be real. The members of the Rules Committee are also sitting behind that dais. So is the decision so that people, again, you all are getting paid. The people sitting behind you are getting paid. The majority of the people who hear this on stream are getting paid. We're the ones that are out here who are not getting paid, but we have to pay for all of this that's taking place here. So we need to have some semblance that our elected officials, those reelected, et cetera, are actually hearing the voices of the public. Now, I, I, so I'm looking straight at you, presiding officer, because it starts with you. And I'm, I'm still trying to understand for all of these other groups that may have issues, but you have seen and heard from the residents of Uniondale, and for those of us who are also impacted because we have to drive through Uniondale to get to the Coliseum and to other places, are you going to be committed as you're moving out to actually put this agenda, this item, on the calendar or not? You know, just stop wasting our time and, and sitting there with your pleasant smile and just making it look like you're nodding and you're acknowledging what's being said, but you're not giving the taxpayers who are here, who are in the room, the satisfaction and the respect and the integrity of their position to say that you see this as a viable opportunity when their representative is sitting there saying that he has asked you, he has encouraged you. I mean, what else, does, what else does it take at this point when the voices have been heard in November? And for many people who will no longer be sitting up there, or for those who are coming to sit up there, there will be more voices. But we need to hear from our elected officials when it counts that you're going to do what you all say that you're going to do and deliver on the promises. That is a major thoroughfare. We've spent billions of dollars for a facility that the people in the local community can hardly get to because of the congestion and the conditions of their roads. So let's be honest. I agree at this point, now that I have more information with regard to this bonding process, I get it. But yes, I am letting my legislator know that I, as a member of the fifth council district, I want to have a copy of those projects, but I am asking, I am requesting that the, the residents in my neighboring communities get their satisfaction of knowing that the streetscape is going to be on the agenda. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Uh, and on the item, uh, item one, ordinance 135. Can I? Uh, respectful of murder and I'm uh, and I allowed her to speak even though it was not on the item we know where you're coming from Heidi okay mm -hmm. uh, we're well aware of the fact that uh, this is something important to you and your community right now we're talking about item one on the calendar ordinance 135 and if there are no more comments regarding that particular ordinance from the legislators or the public then I'm going to ask that we uh, take a vote on the item. Can Anyone? you give me just 10 seconds? It'll it, take less time. I just want to make one, you, just one suggestion, I, one suggestion, because you know the thing is, is you got 10 seconds. Okay, I, I one suggestion, the next meeting of the Rules Committee, is I I December would, 4th. I know the date, but I really would like to see that meeting at the reflection bench outside that was installed to <laughs> honor. I, I, I don't know why about is it December funny? 4th. I, if it's no. here, it's a, it, it's a part of this a building. Fine. I would like a decision to be made this at the reflection bench for Melvin Harris, Jr. Ten seconds are over. Okay, Thank that's you, my suggestion. Honey. Okay, uh, that uh, way, the, that way the, level, the playing field is level. Thank yes, you. Okay, uh, now for the item, item one, ordinance 135. All those in favor signify by saying aye. aye. Any opposed? 
Any opposed? It's unanimous. Okay. Now, uh, Frank, it was unanimous. Uh, now for the consent calendar. I'm going to call uh, all of the items uh, uh, which were vetted in committees. And uh, I begin with item 2, ordinance uh, 136, item 3, ordinance 137, item 4, ordinance 138, item 5, ordinance 139, item 6, ordinance 140, item 7, uh, ordinance 141, uh, item 8, ordinance 142, item 9, ordinance 143, item 10, ordinance um, 144, item 11, ordinance 145, item 12, ordinance, <coughs> excuse me, uh, 146, item 13, ordinance 147, item 14, ordinance 148, item 15, ordinance 149, item 16, ordinance 150, item 17, Ordinance 151, item 18, ordinance 152. Item 19, ordinance 153, item 20, uh, ordinance 154, item 21, ordinance 155, uh, item 22, ordinance 156, uh, item 23, ordinance 157, item 24, ordinance 158. Okay. Item 25, Ordinance 159. Item 26, Ordinance 160. Item 27, Ordinance 161. Uh, item 28, Resolution 193. Item 29, Resolution 194. Item 30, Resolution uh, 195. Item 31, Resolution 196. Item 32, Resolution 197. Item 33, Resolution 198. Item 34, Resolution uh, 199. Item 35, Resolution 200. Item 36, Resolution 201. Item 37, Resolution 202. Uh, item 39, Resolution 204. Item 40, Resolution 205. Okay, item 41, Resolution 206. Uh, item 42, Resolution 207. Item 43, Resolution 208. Resolution 44. Uh, resolution 209, reg item 45, resolution 210, item 46, resolution 211, item 47, resolution 212, item 48, resolution 213, item 49, resolution 214, item 50, resolution 215, item 51, resolution 216, item 52, resolution 217, item 53, resolution 218, item 54, resolution 219, and I believe that's it, moved by, uh, these items moved by Legislator Nicolello, seconded by Legislator Capel. Uh, any further comment from the legislators? Okay. Um, all those in favor of the items that were just called, signify by saying aye. Aye. Any opposed? Yes. The items pass unanimous. And a motion to adjourn. Moved by Legislator Rose Walker and seconded by Legislator Laura Schiffer. All those in favor of adjourning, signify by saying aye. aye.